In cool, temperate regions of the world, there are forests of cone-bearing trees known as conifers. One group in particular, the pines, is especially familiar and comprises one of the most extensively traded crops. Pollen plays an important role in pine reproduction, and we know that it's released from small cones called pollen cones. The pollen cone consists of many small scale-like parts arranged in numerous spirals. Each scale in a single spiral is called a sporophyll and is attached to the central cone axis. On the underside of each sporophyll, there are two microsporangia. An outer epidermis covers the sporophyll and its sporangia. Beneath the subepidermal tissue, there is a layer of cells known as the tapetum. The tapetum tissue contributes to the development of the pollen grains. Inside of the tapetum, there is a mass of spore-producing cells called microsporocytes. The nucleus of a sporocyte cell is diploid, containing two sets of chromosomes, one from each parent. As each sporocyte prepares to divide, it deposits a layer of inert callos. Callos effectively isolates the microsporocytes from one another. The nucleus inside each sporocyte divides by meiosis to produce four haploid daughter nuclei. Each nucleus becomes surrounded by a wall that begins to enlarge at two points. The resulting microspore cells remain attached to one another and are known as a tetrad. The wall outgrowths develop into enlarged, gas-filled structures called wings. The individual microspores now increase in size. At this stage, a microspore consists of two large expanded wings and a smaller dome-shaped portion. The dome-shaped portion contains one of the spore cells from the original tetrad, complete with haploid nucleus and surrounding cytoplasm three successive mitotic divisions now take place. These create two small prothelial cells, one generative cell, and one tube cell. These cells represent the immature male gametophyte. This entire structure consisting of the external wall and the male gametophyte is known as the pollen grain. A final deposit of sporopollenin completes the formation of the pollen grains. And they are released when the microsporangium opens. The pollen grains are now easily dispersed by air currents. Seeds play an important role in the reproduction of pine, and we know that they're released from large woody cones. However, when these cones first appear in the springtime, they're small and fleshy. At this stage, they contain ovules and are called ovulate cones. The intact ovulate cone consists of numerous spirally arranged oviliparous scales. Each oviliparous scale has a small bract fused to its lower surface. The upper surface contains two ovules. Each ovule has an outer protective layer or integument. An opening in the integument, the micropyle consists of a canal that terminates in two micropylar arms, each covered with a sticky secretion. Beneath the integument, there is a fleshy megasporangium containing a diploid megasporocyte cell. When the cone is ready to receive pollen, the oviliparous scales separate from one another, exposing the ovules inside.
carried by air currents, some pollen grains are forced between the oviliferous stems and fall down towards the ovules. Common grains adhere to the sticky surface of the micropylar arms. The megasporangium now releases a fluid. This is called the pollination drop. As this fills the micropyle, it picks up the pollen grains. The pollination drop soon moves back up the tube, taking the pollen grains to the surface of the megasporangium. At this time, the micropylar arms wither, effectively sealing the pollen grains inside the ovule. The scales of the cone now grow together, sealing the ovules inside a tough protective barrier. Inside the ovule on the surface of the megasporangium, the pollen grain begins to swell and form a tube-like growth. The generative cell remains inside the pollen grain, while the tube cell directs the growth of the pollen tube. The generative cell soon divides, forming a sterile cell and a spermatogenous cell. Both of these then move into the growing pollen tube. Inside the megasporangium, the single sporocyte cell divides by meiosis to produce four haploid megaspores. However, three of these degenerate. The surviving megaspore enlarges and its nucleus divides many times, but no walls are formed. It is now the end of the first growing season. With the passing of winter, growth resumes and walls are formed in what is now the female gametophyte. At the micropylar end of the female gametophyte, several pores form. Each of these lead down to an archegonium. At the entrance of an archegonium, there are several rings of neck cells. Inside, there is a large basal venter containing a single egg cell. Early in the second year, the pollen tube grows through the megasporangium to the female gametophyte. As the pollen tube approaches an archegonium, the spermatogenous cell divides to produce two sperm cells. Reaching the archegonium, the tip of the pollen tube forces itself between the neck cells and into the egg. The tube nucleus, two sperm cells in the sterile cell are now released into the egg cytoplasm. One sperm nucleus fuses with the egg nucleus to create a diploid zygote. Adjacent archegonia may also be fertilized if more than one pollen grain is present. The female gametophyte may therefore contain several zygotes.
At the time of fertilization, the ovule therefore consists of several archegonia inside a female gametophyte, which sits inside a megasporangium. The male gametophyte has grown through the megasporangium to reach an egg. This is all enclosed within the integument of the ovule. Protected inside the ovule, the fertilized eggs are now ready to form embryos. The diploid zygote nucleus undergoes two mitotic divisions, and the four nuclei migrate to the base of the archegonium. Successive divisions result in a 16-celled embryo. The four cells at the base of the archegonium are embryo initials. The four cells of the adjacent tier are suspensor initials. The suspensor initials elongate, first pushing the embryo initials up against the wall of the archegonium, and then out into the female gametophyte, where breakdown of adjacent tissue creates a corrosion cavity. The four initial cells separate, and each begins to form an embryo and additional suspensor cells, which push them further into the female gametophyte. Intense competition between the four young embryos for nutrients and space results in only one embryo surviving. Embryo systems in adjacent archegonia proceed through the same stages of growth and competition. Soon, however, one young embryo dominates and proceeds to develop further while the remainder abort. The surviving embryo enlarges and develops a shoot, the apical meristem, surrounded by a circle of seed leaves called cotyledons. Below the cotyledons, the embryo forms an elongated cylinder of cells that represents the stem to root axis. A protective root cap covers an apical meristem. Nutrients now begin to accumulate in the surrounding female gametophyte. Water is removed and the seed enters a resting or dormancy stage. Seed maturation is also accompanied by the transformation of the integument into a tough protective seed coat. The seed and surface tissues separate from the cone scale, forming a winged seed. Cone opening and seed release usually take place in the autumn of the second year. When a seed is released from the cone and absorbs water, it is ready to germinate. Nutrients stored within the female gametophyte are now absorbed by the cotyledons for use by the growing embryo. The root protected by the cap grows into the soil to provide water and support for the stem. Soon the stem axis below the cotyledons, known as the hypocotyl, begins to elongate. Continued hypocotyl elongation lifts the cotyledons out of the soil. When the seed coat is shed, the cotyledons expand and become green and photosynthetic. The short stem above the cotyledons, the epicotyl, begins to grow and to form leaves. The seedling then develops into another cone-bearing tree. With over 500 species, cone-bearing seed plants have successfully adapted to many different habitats around the world. 
The pollen grain has enabled these plants to evolve a form of internal fertilization, breaking the dependence upon water to carry the sperm to the egg. The seed containing an embryo and source of nourishment has replaced the spore as a means of dispersal. This combination of features has contributed to the success of these plants, which include the tallest, largest, and longest living plants known.